okay good good day guys uh, this is just the tutorial on how to use epanet epanet is a water distribution network software that analyze the flow within the network as well as give the water quality assessment or parameters in the in the network so for today we are going to do the tutorial from the beginning starting from how to download the software and then how to install and use it so to start up we can just type epanet here at the google and then the first page that shows you can click on it uh, we can have the self-extracting one here to just download you click and just download it's a free freely available software so you can just download it it's very small you can use and can share with your friends as well so once you finish the download you can run it and just keep clicking on next 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 to finish up and then you can launch it so this is the epanet software and we can just start up and the first step is to set up the project if it has not been set already so if it is a new project as it is it's a new project where you can start with click creating new to just kick start and you can always refer to this tutorial it's an inbuilt tutorial that is provided by the software organizer uh, for the software itself it's inbuilt so we can always sorry we can always refer to this in our tutorial we're going to solve one example this just shows the content of the uh, software for uh, tutorial we're going to solve one example for example this network in, in this tutorial we will analyze the simple water distribution network shown below it consists of a source reservoir as it is up here it could be a water treatment plant or anything that can bring water into a loop system so from which water is pumped into a two loop system this is a two loop system you can see from loop one loop two for example and there is also a pipe leading to a storage tank that floats on the system so this is a storage tank there is it's a pipe that leads from this loop to the tank so it's just a complete network so we are going to analyze it so you can view the map at any time from this uh, dialog you can just click the view map and you can you can visualize it here all right so this is what we are going to design for this example so we're going to keep going from the tutorial button so keep clicking next you know here in the first task is to uh, start by creating the file which we, are, we have just created so the next is to select projects default to open the project dialog form and then on the id levels page we have to clear all the ids id prefixes uh, prefix fields and set the id increments to one only the id increment to one this will make the epanet automatically label new objects with consecutive numbers so when we are adding the the elements uh, in the loop they are going to carry consecutive numbers such as one two three so this is on the id levels and on the hydraulic tab we are going to choose the gallon per minute this is gpm gallon per minute and the flow units is going to be uh, uh, as the flow units and then the hazard williams is going to be selected as the head loss formula for this so we're going to do uh, then you click ok to accept everything and then you can click the save box if you want this setting to be replicated on all your projects that you're going to carry out with this software so for now we have five things to do we have done one and then the next one is to select projects project then the defaults to open the so we click projects defaults you can see the dialog form so from here we can make sure that the prefixes are removed everything is cleared except the id increment like you said the id increment should be set to one so after setting it to one the next thing is okay the id levels only the id increment should be set to one now on the hydraulics page so this is the hydraulic page here so we should just make sure that the units the flow unit is gallon per minute gpm and 
the head loss formula is has a million then we click on check so on the hydraulic tab the head loss formula already default at has a million and the the unit is set to gallon per minute already so if you want in case you are to use other units you can always select which unit you prefer but for this tutorial we are going to use gpm which is gallon per minute so after this we just click ok to accept and if you want to replicate these savings these settings on all of your projects you can click the save button here uh you can check it so for now we just click on ok to accept that and we're finished with this step so the next step is we we'll click next next we will set some map display options so that our id labels will be displayed as we add objects to the network as well the symbols for these objects so here we are going to do four things or nearly six but for now we just start with the view options view we select view to options and to bring up the map option dialog form so when we bring that up we select the notation and on the notation page we're going to check off all check off the boxes for display nodes the two boxes display node ids and display link ids display node ids and display link id so we start view options view options down here so what do we do we go to notation so we display node ids and display link ids okay so this is for this then the next is we go to then switch to the symbols and check all the boxes so we switch to symbols and check all the boxes here if they are not checked we we'll check all of them okay the next is uh we just click okay to accept this all right we'll say okay to accept then finally before placing objects on the map we should set up set its dimensions so select view dimensions to bring up the map <laughs> dimensions dialog form and you can leave the, the dimensions at their default values for this example so we can just set select view dimensions view dimensions and then we leave everything as it is okay the default one so you have other map units in case you are interested but for the map dimensions to define the boundary i think everything should be like this for this example right so next we click on next so mind you we can always view the map we are dealing with here we can bring it down here in the time for just visualization so we are now ready to begin constructing our network so the first thing is to add the reservoir like it is in the in the network the first thing is the reservoir okay so we start by adding the reservoir how do we add the reservoir first add the reservoir by clicking the reservoir button on the top toolbar on the map toolbar okay you can see it up which is this you can see it here this is the reservoir and then click the mouse on the on the map uh, at the location where the reservoir belongs so for example we just click on this and then assuming it's going to be here so we click it so that's our source for the first time so next we will add the junction nodes so you can see from the net network there are nodes one two three four five six about six nodes so we are going to add them respectively according to their spacing so that we can exactly replicate the way it is so the button we, we click on the node button on the map toolbar and then click on the map locations starting from uh, node 2 through to node 7 so we can click on node 2 here 3 4 okay so we click node 2 3 4 all right so the next is four then we have not five six seven all right so we have not five six seven all right so the next thing is we already have our notes 
So finally we add the tank by clicking on tank button and then clicking on the map where the tank is located. Alright, so we just click on the tank here. You can see it's a tank, so you can see the level. So we just click and place it here. Alright, so what's the next instruction? Uh, note, note how sequential the ID levels are generated automatically as we add objects. So you can see how sequential they are, they are generated from 1 to 8. The elements, you can see how they are distributed. The nodes, you can see the, the, the levels. So the next thing is we will add the pipes. So let's begin with pipe 1, connecting node 2 and 3. So we just connect node 2 to 3. With the pipes so we just click pipe here you can see it so we click pipe we click we connect node 2 we click node 2 and then we click node 3 all right connected next is uh so we can see node 2 3 so this is the next one is going to be 3 to 7 that's node uh, 2 3 to 7 click then next one is three to four all right so this is pipe three next is going to be three to four four to six so we have four to six and then six to seven so we have four to six and then six sorry you can always escape if it is not done rightly so you can four to six right and then so this is pipe four then six to seven we are going to adjust it as we finish all right so next is we have uh right then we have this is five number six is the one connecting the tank so there's a little uh you have to pay attention here Pipe six, pipe number six is the one leading node seven to eight. And to get that done, we have to click on pipes. But instead of going from node seven to eight, we just click on node eight, node eight, sorry, to seven. And then we'll have it. So pipe six. After pipe six, then which one is pipe seven? Pipe seven is four to five. Okay. Pipe seven is four to five. Right then, pipe five to six is our uh, uh, connecting node five to six is our pipe number eight. And here you have to be a bit careful because it's a curved. You can see the curve. This curve is a bit tricky, so you have to pay attention to how we are going to do it. So it, the so this is what it says. Pipe eight is curved. So to draw it, the the mouse uh, click the mouse first on node five. Okay that's here you click here then as you move the mouse towards node 6 click at the points where a change of direction is needed to maintain the desired shape complete the process by clicking on node 6 so what we need to do is to start by clicking node 5 and then as we move towards node 6 we can just be clicking the points to be able to see a curve coming up and then we can finish off by clicking node 6 all right so you can see at least roughly uh, we're getting the shape but later we'll shape it okay finally we add the pump by clicking on the pump and then uh, clicking on node 1 and then down to node 2 so you can see the pump is what connects node 1 and node 2 so we we'll just click on pump here all right so once we click the pump we we'll move from node one two node two okay now we are done with the network uh so what what's the next task all right we click on next uh, next so the final task is to uh, in building our network is to add some descriptive levels so to add descriptive levels we can we can always click on the text letter t Okay, so here we have source, pump, and tank. So we have three letters description. So we have pump. 
So you can just use pump, sorry, pump. You hit enter, 